All right, Cryptilians and crackheads. So I'm both blonde and male at the same time. I'm driving in heavy, heavy winds here. <laughs> uh, uploaded a video with no sound because I was scramming out the door to go to a quick appointment. <laughs> Uh, now I know the feeling uh, why some of the YouTube analyst folks that I watch, uh, why they make a short video sometimes, uh, beginning the conversation, damn it, I just recorded an hour with no sound. <laughs> uh, that's fun. <laughs> but I was hurrying out the door trying to upload it for you all quickly, um, so sorry. <laughs> uh, but pretty much, I'm going to have to keep it short today because i got a lot of stuff to do here, um, work-related. But essentially, B Pro following the same stuff. I really think it's gonna ride its uh, daily candle 21. Uh, one important thing though I did say on that though, on the B Pro section is that, uh, here, let me turn off my air so maybe I'll chill stuff down. But uh, one, one important thing is, uh, I think there is a decent chance, uh, maybe not probability 50% over, but, uh, I don't know, 10% or higher chance, which is kind of high in trading um, among all the possibilities possible. But uh, if you look at the, if you look at BPRO and trading view on the weekly chart, so weekly specifically, and you have your 10 EMA there, its slope is not aggressive. It's pretty, you know, it's flatter than everything else, right? So more flat, less this. And it is going to ride just below the bottom line of that triangle we have forming. All right. And one thing I want you to watch out for is uh, two possibilities if that does play out. And what I mean by it plays out is that price needs to touch it before it lifts off again. There are two. Uh, so these are our two what ifs. I don't know if they're the top three probable, but among the five things you need to be planning for, three most likely, even if they're not over 50% each, obviously, like. 20% chance, 15% chance, 10% chance of two what ifs, like, you know, small percentages, but your two what ifs is this, uh, is that in order for a uh, price to touch the 10 EMA on the weekly, price might skyrocket above its all time high. And it might not do it for a breakout. It might do it to close this week, so it, which closes in four days, I think on Sunday or so. Um, it might try to close this candle above for an all-time high, right, on the US dollar chart. And what that'll do is the current one-week segment of the, uh, of the 10 EMA, it'll, at the juncture, it'll go up. It'll make a more aggressive slope. And what that'll do is it'll allow the next week or the week after, uh, it'll make that 10 EMA go within the triangle or just under it, and then price is gonna scream down to touch it. So you will have a big fake out, a monster sell off for like maybe just a day. It might be a literally a 40% drop in a day. So watch out for that weekly 10 and watch out for a fake out breakout, a breakout, fake out, whatever, you know, it rhymes, but I'm not trying to rhyme. <laughs> uh, I'm not just a white boy, I'm a Casper. <laughs> so rhyming and rapping is not my game, uh, although I can sing. Um, so uh, in Latinos, typically I'm not Casper to them, I'm more like a chicken, <laughs> like, a, like a baby chick with blonde hair. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, so watch out for that. But that's only one what if. The other what if with B Pro is pretty similar. Instead of price doing a breakout fake out in order to make the juncture of that weekly uh, segment of the 10 EMA uh, go up, it stays at the same, you know, uh, kind of slope and doesn't quite meet. Dang it, I'm behind school buses. Ah. Uh, it doesn't quite that 10 EMA doesn't quite get into our lower range. You know, the bottom of the triangle that's going like this. Um, hopefully I did that the right way. Um, I think when I'm recording this way, you got to go inverse. So uh, to me, it would be that way, but you that way. So the bottom of the triangle is ascending. Uh, I think the red is going to be riding underneath it if price doesn't do a breakout fake out. And I think you're going to have a deep, deep, deep red day. Just probably one because the bots are not going to want you to be able to buy that. So if you bought, you know, uh, at 0.006 and above, 
you're going to be in a loss for a little bit, but it's not going to be long. And and it's not going to, you know, go way back down to 0.002, most likely in a bear market. The likelihood of that, that's not even a what if. That's a possibility. Uh, so I don't want to tell you that's not going to happen. This is not financial advice. It could happen, but the likelihood is probably under 1% of that. And I think it's more likely we go straight to two cents than that happens. Uh, but I think the two what ifs for BPRO right now is it's one, one of those ways it's going to come down and tag the weekly 10 before it lifts off. And it could be a really strong bounce off of it. So uh, as in goes down, green can and, and, and uh, the next day is a green candle. The next day is a green candle. On the third day, it breaks out. It could be hop, skipping, and jumping off of that very aggressively uh, because the bots don't want you to be able to buy it that low. They don't want you to profit, right? Uh, they want to they, they take your profit. The next thing I was talking about was MTV ticker, not the music television, which only stayed music for about nine years, and then it turned into reality shows. I grew up in the last little bit of it when they started introducing Beavis and Butthead on MTV, and then it was only half music uh, by the time I was, so I'm 35, so in the early, in the late 90s or the mid 90s or so, by that point it was less than half music, but anyway... MTV ticker, which is multivac, you can look into what that coin does, but the cool thing about it is it's a legit working thing, okay, first off, and which most of new coins in this space this run are, so that's good, better than 2017 where everything was just a website, it was totally stupid. It was literally the dot-com bubble last time, this time it's really not, but anyway, um, the, uh, so apart from what it does, what interests me the most, why I think that can really fly is two, a combination of two reasons. First is uh, the, C, the CEO of KuCoin on which it trades. He's, I don't know if he's one of the founders in terms of code, but he's one of the advisors. So if he wants that coin to pop, he can make his bots turn on hard. That's one. Two, even without that, let's say that didn't exist, I would still be thinking that this could has, I mean, this could this could beat uh, Phantom's run not on a uh, market cap basis. I don't think it's going to scream to seven hundred million, which would be a seven hundred times uh, increase on your money. Which that there are very few coins that do that every year, but there are a handful. Uh, and that one, that one has the making. If you got that under two million cap, this this could potentially be one of those. Uh, will it be? I mean, it's unlikely. Um, but even if it only goes to two hundred million, that's way more than hundred x. And two hundred million is small for during a bull market. During a bear market, probably go back down to like ten million. But uh, but but anyway, the second thing is that the BTC pairing uh, and the U.S. dollar pairing, but the BTC pairing. It's got so much room to get to its all-time high. It's insane. So if this coin makes gains on the BTC chart with all that room to get to all-time highs, which a lot of coins are doing, they're making all-time highs on Bitcoin. Do you know, and Bitcoin's going up, do you know how much price movement that's going to be? Thousands and thousands and th tens of thousands of percents. It's going to be monster monster. So what, what I was trying to say there is that using the Bitcoin pairing, uh, there's not much resistance. There's only a few points of resistance on the US dollar pairing there. And uh, the chance of it screaming past anything that is US dollar pairing resistance is really high because it's going to be, um, it's going to be playing off of the, uh, it's going to be playing off the BTC pairing. So uh yeah, I mean, it's like, it, which means on the U.S. dollar pairing, it's going to ignore pretty much all the resistance there, and it's going to uh, only play the BTC. And so, since the BTC pairing's got a lot of room to go, and Bitcoin's going up, it has to make serious, serious, serious dollar gains to get up there. Whew, that one, like, that could go fly high. Uh, then I covered VRA. Um, how uh, I was, uh, I had put limit cells um, up at a certain point, even though price did go through it and I didn't sell at the perfect spot. It doesn't matter. I flipped it for a 63% increase on my money 
all right, by limit by buying at the breakout, as I posted the video, I literally told you as I was buying it, like I didn't buy it first, then post the video. I was, I think I was clicking as I was making the video. <laughs> um, and, uh, uh, but anyway, you know, and the whole point there is that, uh, as opposed to coin loyalty and stuff, uh, mix that with, you know, over time, you don't want, you don't care about perfect trades. You don't care about perfect trades. Not all trades are going to be perfect. Stop thinking about that. If you sold before the height of a coin, it doesn't matter. You can't sell tops. It doesn't matter, right? You make an educated first guess. So instead of perfect trade every time, you're looking for profitable trades over time. So perfect every versus profitable over time. Every time, over time, perfect, profitable. So I was trying to explain that, hey, I set my limit orders too low, but here was the uh, the technical analysis reason why I set them there using the BTC pairing. So although, you know, it busted right through, that's awesome. That Not, not only is profitable over time, that's profitable 63% profit in a day, 26 hours. I, and if you don't follow me on Twitter, I, I posted my trades. Uh, to prove, like, to show y'all, like, what, exactly how I did it, and it had like five pages of uh, sell orders or buy and sells, uh, just for that one coin, right? And uh, that's why in one of my earlier videos I referenced, um, I referenced, uh, I have twenty pages of sell orders alone over all my coins. That's I was kind of giving, you know, showing you how I do that just for one coin, and why if you hold several coins, it's going to be twenty pages. Um, and then Shaw. Uh, safe Haven, I was mentioning that I had guessed it would make better, quicker gains than VRA, that I was wrong. Uh, but you can't be right every time. You just need to be profitable over time. And I think that Shaw is going to let its 10 EMA catch up a little bit more. And I think it might take off next week. Um, or it might play off of the daily 21. So both of those are catching up. I don't see it taking off this week, uh, today. It might be later this week. Uh but I would say Monday, Tuesday is when that one's going to start screaming up to its all-time high on the U.S. dollar pairing. Um, I think it's cooling its tits right now, and, and it's letting uh, some moving averages on the bigger time frames daily and weekly catch up so it can really boost off. And if it does that, that gives it a better chance of breaking through its all-time high. So really, the more it ranges right there, that small range, you know, it's not even a big range. Like, it didn't pump that hard, right? It pumped a little bit, and it's cooling. I mean, it's cooling off right now. It could be awesome for just busting through, you know, kind of like VRA just went, <laughs> and how MTV actually is going through all of its uh, US dollar resistance, just skyrocketing through for different reasons on that one because the BTC pairing has so much room, but and Bitcoin's going up. But Shaw, for different reasons, um, uh, so if it doesn't take off till next week, it could really screen past its US dollar pairing uh, all time high. And that's pretty much uh, what I was trying to say. And the other thing I mentioned uh, in my videos, instead of going off on long tangents uh, on ideas about liquidity, this and that, what I'm going to start trying to do is mentioning it, but having individual videos with the links in the description section uh, to which, uh, viewers can refer. So my videos don't have to be like an hour plus long. They'll probably be like more like 30 minutes. That's kind of my goal here. Um, and, but that will require work on my part to, you know, have a mixture of library videos with the links down there. Um, but, uh, so just a heads up, you know, on how this, how, how I'm going to like Kaizen or continuously improve the channel, uh, for your viewer experience. So you won't miss out on like my ramblings or thoughts on interesting ideas that are profitable for you. Um, this angle really makes me, shows my hair. I'm like, I don't know how much longer I'm going to have my hair. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, um, so Latinas won't be able to call me a chicken anymore because I won't have any damn hair. <laughs> They'll just call me a cancer patient. Oh, I shouldn't joke about that. I apologize. Um, that's not a funny topic to joke around. Um, but anyway, but they might call me that. But um, so, uh, yeah, but the joking about cancer is not funny. Uh, but anyway, uh, so, yeah, that's, that's what we have going on for the channel. Um, and, uh, you know, throughout this, you know, I'll try to stay... Uh, not insensitive to joking about things like that. I'm, I'm, I'm usually pretty aware of that stuff, even though that one slipped out. I do apologize if that was a sensitive topic. Well, it probably is for at least at least three and a hundred, more than three percent of y'all who are watching. So I apologize. Uh, but anyway, yeah, that's that's how uh, we're gonna be rolling here and be pro train. Uh, you know, uh, we're still targeting the 25th uh, for a breakout, maybe the 20th. 
uh, something like that and uh, you know keep uh, you know playing with your tin bags and if if your coin starts cooling its tits uh, and you think it might be four days until it hits the moving average down lower uh, to create a lower end of the range try to find a breakout coin that's breaking out and take that tin bag in US and tether right and buy that breakout and keep looking at the coin you really want whether it's VRA or Shaw or B Pro and as it's going down you are profiting on a breakout now you can buy more of it not just because you're buying it lower you can buy more if you didn't move it somewhere else you can buy more because it's lower but it's lower and you now have more tether right so play with your tin bag cross coins and move it back at the right time there's a lot of money in this there's a lot of money and it doesn't even take a lot of trades it doesn't like maybe two a day it, it doesn't take a lot uh, maybe one a day, maybe two every other five days, something like that. But it doesn't take a lot of effort. Um, you just got to know, you know, uh, you have, a, have to have a plan and levels to search for. Don't worry about them being perfect. They're just profitable, profitable over time. And uh, yeah, so don't be scared to, you know, cross chain, cross uh, chain your 10 bags and peace out. See you next time.